Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn. Now I do all things crafty, but on today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made this sublimation tumbler. Now this tumbler is for a friend of mine. We have been best friends since we were six years old. She turned 60 today, and I'm getting ready to surprise her tonight. Now I made her a birthday queen rhinestone shirt you might've seen me make on video. I gave that to her last weekend at a funeral, but she has no idea that I'm showing up today for her birthday. Her family is having a birthday dinner for her, and myself and three other of our high school friends were crashing the party. So we're putting together this birthday basket, and this is one of the things that I'm going to put in it. So if you're interested in seeing this, stay tuned. As for me, I have to drive almost four hours, so I need to go get ready and get on the highway. Here's what I plan to use for the video, and I usually forget something. So if I did, I'll put a title at the bottom, and you can see what else I might use. I have my image, and of course it's backwards right now because when you sublimate, things are backwards, but it says most people call me Carol, but you can call me Birthday Queen. And I love this design. This came in a file that had tons of things you could add to it. But I designed it to look similar to one I did for myself a long time ago. Now, I first fell in love with this file when I saw a lady named Patty use it a long time ago. At that time in design bundles, I think it was $12. I ended up joining Creative Fabrica, and I found it, and I got it free as part of my membership. Like I said, it has a ton of things that will go on it. I just kept mine pretty simple. And then I have a Sublifun tumbler press right here. It will do 20 ounce, 30 ounce. I don't remember what other ounces, but it will do those. And then I have a straight skinny tumbler that is a 20 ounce, and this is also from Sublifun. So the first thing that I wanna do is go ahead and clean this. Now, this might be a step you can skip, but I always do it just to be careful. So this is just 90% rubbing alcohol, and then I'm just using two paper towels one to clean it with, and one to dry it off with. Now I move my print out of the way because you never want to get alcohol or really any liquid on your prints. So this is really all there is to it. This would dry really quickly because it's alcohol, but I go ahead and use a dry one just to make sure it's dry. Now other things that I'm gonna use is some heat tape my rotary cutter. I'm gonna use my ruler to guide my rotary cutter. Then I have some butcher paper and, and some heat gloves. I'll grab those before I get started. Now, for my image, I often have people ask me, what size did you make your image? And it really depends on your tumblers. I've had different size tumblers, even though they were both 20 ounce skinnies. And so you'll really need to just cut out a template and see if it fits your tumbler. Now there's nothing in this design that was so finicky that I can't cut it down. So I made this 9.4 wide by 8.2 tall and I fully expect to have to cut it down some. Now what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that at least on one side, I get all the white off. Because if you leave white, on both sides, you're gonna get a white stripe on your tumbler. And so what I do is I cut a little bit of the design off on one side, and then I leave a little bit of the white on the other. And I'll show you more what I'm talking about in just a minute. Now whatever way works well for you to cut paper, feel free to use that method. When I use my pull down or even my slide across, sometimes I'll bunch up the paper. So I found I get the best results with a rotary blade. Okay, so you, whoops. <laughs> you can see there is a tiny bit of the design on that end. Then on this end, just so I make sure it's large enough, I'm gonna get all the way over off the design. I might be even with the end of it, but I don't really wanna cut off 
any of the design. So there's a tiny bit of white and that's fine. Now at the bottom of your tumblers, because they're slightly beveled or rounded, you can have a little bit of white showing down there. But what I like to do at the top of the tumbler is, I like the paper to be almost exactly even with the top. And so for that reason, I'm going to cut off all the white, and again, just slightly into the design. So again, there's a tiny bit of ink on there. All right, so now let's do a reality check and see how much more I'm going to have to cut off. The way I like to do this is I like to turn my tumbler upside down and I don't like to handle it too much after I've cleaned it. Then I put my paper upside down against the table. Now it's a good size going around it, but there's way too much extra above it or below it. So I can chop off part of the bottom, part of the top, or a little bit of each. In my case, I think I'll start at the bottom and I'm going to use the grid marks on my cutting mat to try to get this pretty straight. Now I feel confident I can cut that much off. Hopefully I'm not wrong. All right, so let's dry fit this again. And that is almost perfect. So it's even with it at this end. There's just a tiny bit that's going to go around the bottom. So I like that. Now remember, I have a little bit of white here. So this side will have to be on the bottom and this side on top. Now that I have it all straight, I go ahead and lay my tumbler down. Sometimes I use a little cradle that I made. Okay, the top's even, the bottom's not quite even. I'm not too concerned about that. And for now, I'm just going to put one piece of tape on the top. All right, let me check me. Okay, so the top is toward me. So I'm going to put one piece of tape on the top and then pull it over really, really snugly and press it down. Now it's pretty much even with the top, but what I do is I put my hand in it and I just kind of try to get the paper to move slightly so that it is just barely above the top. All right, I think that's good. So I'm not going to have you sit through all of this, but now what I do is I take a long piece of tape, I put it along that side. Now I'm not pressing it down on this side yet because I want to squeeze those together and then press that down. And then this one, I'm going to pull it over the top just to kind of keep the paper in place. And the exact same thing on the bottom, but I don't necessarily have to have that going over the bottom. Squeeze it together, get it as tight as I can, and now I'm ready to do the top seam. Now, even though there was a little bit beyond the curve, it still isn't touching the table, so it's not pushing my paper up. All right, so this is the top piece. Now I've changed this a little bit. I used to do two rows, the first row even with the top, and then the second row above the top to really pull it over. I'm going to try to get away with just doing one row of tape here. Okay, now when I do this, and you want to get it pretty straight, not as crooked as I did, 
But when you do this, the way I do it is I stretch this tape really tight so that I get a little bit of a rebound effect, meaning it's trying to pull the paper in. And so that looks good. And I like to kind of push my paper up against my cup, go all the way around it, and then pressing it straight over the top and down into the cup. Now it looks like I have one little gap here I didn't get. That's probably okay, but actually, I don't know if you can see it, but it's trying to gap there. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. But it's trying to gap because it's so tight everywhere else and be a little bit away from the top. What that can do is that can cause a blank white space or a fuzzy space at the top. So now I'm pulling really tight on that and then pressing it over. Okay, so now I'm going to just investigate the top of my cup and see if I see any gaps. And if I do, I'm going to try to rub those out. I think that looks good. So now I'm going to do pretty much the same thing on the bottom. And so I'll just fast forward through this part. Now the last thing that I want to do, you could use your fingernail, you could use a credit card. I have this little scraper tool. So I want to first go on one side of the seam and really press down on that. Then I'm going to go on the top side of the seam and really press down on that as well. Is this doing anything? I don't know, but it makes me feel better, so I do it. When I first started out, I had several tumblers that were just substandard. So I probably am a little bit extra on what I do, but I usually really like the results. Now, before I even turn this on, I want to see if the pressure is set to the right place. So I'm just going to put that in there. And that seems so, well, I thought it seemed a little bit loose. Here's the weird thing. When this heats up, not only the cup expands, but it seems like this pad expands. So I think I'm going to leave it alone. Now I do want to make sure there's an even gap. It looks like the gap here is a little bit larger, so I'll adjust that side. All right, let's go ahead and take it out and then turn it on, let it start heating up. Now there's a green button on this side, so I'm just going to press that. And then I think it's going to heat up to what it was defaulted to before. Let me see. All right, 385, that's the temperature for 45 seconds. I think that's good. I used to do them 50 seconds, turn it, 50 seconds, turn it, 20 seconds, turn it, 20 seconds, turn it. I've backed off that just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and stay with 45 seconds. Now I moved to this side because on this side there's nothing obstructing where you put the tumbler in. And on this side you have the cord that goes from the machine to your pressing pad. And so I like to slip it in from this side. When I <laughs> do it from that side on videos, it feels like I'm just fighting with it. So I have a piece of butcher paper, and all I do is I put my tumbler inside the butching. I put my tumbler inside the butching. <laughs> I put my tumbler inside the butcher paper, and I make sure I know where the seam is. I want to start with the seam either backwards or forwards.
Okay, so in this case, I've moved the seam to the back, so it's going to be straight back. Now, when I close that, it starts counting down automatically. When the 45 seconds goes off, I'm going to rotate that 180 degrees, so that seam's going to be at the front. Now this time when the timer goes off, I'm going to rotate that just 45 degrees and then heat it for about 20 more seconds. Then I'll take it out and put it on a ceramic tile. Now notice that the paper is kind of burnt, and that's just normal. What I want to do is, I want to unwrap this enough just to see if I feel like it's ready. It is still extremely hot, so be careful with this part. So what I like to do is just snip into the tape. Then I can just pull that apart. Now, obviously, if I need to put this back in the press, I'll need to replace that. So I'm going to just peel this down far enough to see. Ooh, that looks good. Do you want to see? <laughs> I'm going to let it cool off just a minute, get my camera turned around, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Now, it's been about four or five minutes. And I can easily handle this. I'm still going to be really careful because I didn't get a look at the front side. Now, if this is done well, I assume the front side will be. Oh my goodness. It's beautiful. Whoops, sorry about that scratching noise. That was the paper scratching on it. That is gorgeous. Now my friend loves yellow, so that's why I went with the yellow design. And you see right there, most people call me Carol, but you can call me birthday queen. So pretty. Now you're gonna see the seam because they're different colors. That looks good. Now, when I show the tops of these, the camera light glares, so you kind of have to watch it go all the way around. It still looks like it's picking up a glare, but the top looks great. Let's look at the bottom. The bottom looks great. Those colors are beautiful. I think she's going to love this. So as soon as her surprise dinner tomorrow is over, I'll go ahead and get this scheduled to upload the next day. I hope you've enjoyed it. And until my next video, bye-bye.